Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending July 22nd, 2017. First off, this is from Channel News Asia, NASA's Historic Apollo Mission Control Center seeks donations for urgent restoration. They started a $250,000 Kickstarter campaign and are asking for donations and what they're going to try to do is restore this control center to its exact 1969 state. In, fa in fact, they're going to try to uh, bring it back to exactly the way, um, using photographs and any kind of historic footage, they're going to try to bring it back to exactly the way it was in uh, the July 20th, uh, 1969, down to the ashtrays, notebooks, and headphones laying in various places. So I'll read the first part of the article. There are 50 years after Apollo 11, the Apollo Mission Control Center is on another mission. It is to be restored to its former glory. An online campaign to raise funds for the National Historic Landmarks Urgent Restoration was launched Friday, July 21st, that was yesterday, after unlimited visitor access and declining budgets took a toll on the much-revered site, according to the Kickstarter page. And there is a Kickstarter link right in the middle of the article, so if you would like to do that. Um, there's also been some donations coming in already, I guess. Uh, uh, it says, according to the campaign page, the city of Webster in Texas, where many Apollo personnel lived, volunteered earlier this year a lead gift of $3.1 million. It has also said it will match public donations dollar for dollar up to $400,000. And as of Saturday, the Kickstarter campaign has raised $50,000, but um, because of Kickstarter rules, if they do not reach the entire amount of $250,000 by August 19th, it will be a failed campaign and they will not get any of the money. So. Space Center Houston said restoration works will involve recreating all the five areas of the control center to accurately portray how it looked the moment the moon landing took place on July 20, 1969, right down to ashtrays, pencils, headsets, and coffee cups that were used and placed on the consoles at this time. And since the control center later served as a control for the space shuttle program, it's been updated and refurbished quite a few times, so they're going to need some working to get it to restore back to a 1969 condition. Next up from whas11.com, Ford creates pursuit-rated F-150 police pickup truck. Uh, it's pretty interesting. I'm, I'm still kind of puzzled about the top speed, though, but uh, it could be because of the gearing and stuff like that. But anyway, I'll get into the article. Do police departments need a pickup truck in their Crime-catching lineup, Ford believes they do. The Dearborn, Michigan-based automaker has unveiled its first-ever police pursuit version of the F-150 pickup. Um, the 375-horsepower four-wheel drive crew cab developed specifically for agencies like the U.S. Border Patrol, Sheriff's Department, and the Fish and Game Authorities. That's why I think, really, it's more that uh, because of the suspension of being four-wheel drive, it's rated to do 100 miles per hour while bouncing up and down and over kind of rugged territory and stuff like that because I don't think a, a flat out 100 mile per hour speed is that impressive of a deal but it does have 375 horsepower so it's not a sleeper and it's uh, it says it's the same V6 engine as Ford police vehicle versions of the Taurus sedan and the Explorer SUV there's also a 40 second video in the very center of the article um, all the links to all the articles will be in down in the comments below uh, they give you about 40 seconds of various photographs of uh, different views of it. It says, Ford has long been a leader in police car and SUV sales to law enforcement departments and is trying to hang on to that lead position. I guess almost 50% of the police departments use Ford type of vehicles. So um, that's kind of cool. So if you get a chance, uh, check it out or leave in the comments below what you think about. Is there a need for a F-150 Ford per, uh, pursuit vehicle? Uh, one of the upgrades to it that's kind of cool too is it's going to come with a 240 amp alternator to power computer, lights, sirens, and other devices, upgraded brakes, and a new front stabilizer. So, yeah, 7,000 pound towing capacity complete with police responder package. I think it's more that it can probably keep up a speed of around 100 miles per hour, uh, bouncing up and down over rough terrain because just a straight 100 miles per hour, well, uh, there's probably a lot of police interceptor vehicles that can do that. And next, from CNN Politics Exclusive, CNN Witnesses, U.S. Navy's drone killer program. Um, they're actually outfitting a ship to actually use it. Um, in sometimes hostile waters of the Persian Gulf looms the U.S. Navy's first, in fact, the world's first, active laser weapon. The LAWS, an acronym for Laser Weapons System, is not science fiction. It's not experimental. It's deployed aboard the USS Ponce amphibious transport ship. 
ready to be fired at targets today and every day by Captain Christopher Wells and his crew. CNN was granted exclusive as access to a live fire test of the laser. And you can see a video on this one too where it shoots down a drone by uh, burning up one of the wings on the side and the drone goes tumbling out of the air. It is more precise than a bullet, Wells told CNN. It's not a niche weapon system like some other weapons that have throughout the military where it's only good against air contacts or it's only good against surface tar contacts or it's only good against uh, ground-based targets. In this case, this is a very versatile weapon. It can be used against a variety of targets. Uh, one of the people talks in one of the videos and says it's really neat because if they have a, a ship coming towards the uh, uh, your uh, destroyer or something like that, if you have an unknown small ship approaching it, what they can do is they can just take out the engine without injuring any of the crew or anything like that. So in case for some reason you can't really identify whether it's a hostile or not, you can render the ship immobile and then send uh, people out there to intercept it without um, having it get close enough to endanger the, the military ship. Uh, so the nice thing too is you don't have to lead the target since it goes at the speed of light. You just point it where you want it to go. No leading the target or anything like that. You just point it, focus it, and shoot. Uh, and the, the nice thing about it too is uh, you've probably heard some of the costs of some of the weapons like uh, you know, dropping every one of these bombs is $8,000, sending this kind of a, a missile is $50,000, this is a quarter of a million dollars every time they, they drop this particular guided bomb. These things operate at about a dollar a shot, they said. So uh, just for the economy of it, I guess that would be a pretty good thing. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.